Hello Taurus, welcome to the channel, this is Asnoinche here. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome. So this is a general love reading, and I'll be looking into the feelings and emotions of the person that you're connecting with on a romantic level, what it is that they're feeling and thinking towards you currently. The deck that I'm using is the Goddess Oracle deck by Amy Sophia Marashinsky. So some of you may have been in a relationship. Others of you, this could be a situationship. And for a small portion of you, this could be someone that you've met. You have a very strong connection, but no one's really speaking up. We have here betrayal. Okay, somebody here feels very used physically. Like a one night stand, somebody or used somebody and uh, it was very unexpected in the sense that they were expecting things to go well the next day, but then boom. Somebody here got ghosted. All right, we have here beauty, laughter, compassion, illusion, selfhood, betrayal, doubt, sexuality, embracing the shadow. And then we have ecstasy under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. I'm going to express to you what it is that your person of interest is feeling towards you currently. For those of you who are new, my method of reading is just slightly different. I do not channel through any spirit guides. I never have. And I have certain reasons for that. I do channel through my higher intuitive self because I can. And here goes. My dear Taurus, I recognize you now more, more than before. Before I would only look on the outside and I would just see that shell, but now I get to see who you are really on the inside. And I like what I see, your charm, your character, your personality. You are someone who is very beautiful. As a human being, I find you to be that. And you have this ability of being one with nature, this ray of sunshine. You also have this way of showing me my reflection, who I really am. And sometimes I don't like what I see. I do value this connection, this relationship that I have with you, this situationship that we're in. I feel when I'm with you that you are like my best friend. And there's a part of me that does not want to disconnect from that feeling. You make me feel vibrant, alive again, young again, youthful again. You know what makes my heart happy. You know what makes me tick. You also know what turns me on. But I do feel that in this connection, I have betrayed that friendship, that foundation that exists of who I am and who you are, what we are together. And now I feel sorry for you. I feel empathy and sympathy because I know the things that I have put you through, the things that you have been through. It shouldn't have happened, but it did. I feel that in this connection there is this sense of release that is needed. I have empathy and compassion for you. But certain things are supposed to change and they just didn't. They just don't. 
I understand I put you in a very difficult situation. And things were really bad before. And then things were okay for a while. And now it turns out they're worse. All of these things that I have done, I'm hiding. I'm hiding from you. I pretend and I act as if I don't know anything. I'm emotionally detached. When in actual fact, I am embarrassed for what I've done and I'm hiding behind a false mask, behind a veil. I don't tell you the truth. I don't talk about it. I also feel that in this connection, there is this sense of independence that you have now. Things have changed. You are no longer the same. And this is because of me. The things that I have put you through, it has changed you as a person. For me, not in a good way. Because now you have completely changed and I don't know who you are anymore. I see you now as somebody who is very strong, independent, self-sufficient, self-reliant. You don't need me. You don't need anybody. But in addition to that, I find you to be very guarded. You are quite guarded. And you don't want anybody to come near, especially not me. Perhaps... You were not like this, but this is how I see you. This is how I view you. And you have turned into this person who is distant and cold. It's very difficult for me to be with you. I want to be with you, but I don't know who you are anymore. And you turned into this person because of me because of the things that I have said and done. Because I betrayed you. You believed in me. You believed in us. And I betrayed that. Now there's a lack of trust, a lack of faith in this connection. I can't change the past. And to you, it seems as though I was a stranger. I was a stranger and things are never going to be the same again. There are certain things that have happened in this connection. And now it's as if I was a stranger this entire time and you just didn't even know I was a stranger now. The stranger that existed, you thought you could predict me, you thought you knew me. But you really didn't know me. And that's why it hurts. Because now it seems as if I'm a stranger to you. But once we were close. And this distance that I have created, it's because I feel uncomfortable. I don't know really how to handle this situation. And I don't really want to. But then I also don't want to lose you. I'm stuck. Between a rock and a hard place. And I have doubts that this connection might even work out. The doubts that exist in my heart and my mind now are because of the things that I have done to you sexually. In real life, in the 3D, and also in my mind. Even through my eyes, when I gaze at you, when I think about you, I have, I've had my way with you. I've done everything. But in the 3D, I know I haven't been the best. I have been someone who has taken advantage of you, misused you. Somebody who has overindulged in sensuality, 
and sexuality. And even after all of that, it seems now as if there is no commitment. Because I only consider you a friend. Why do I act like this? Because that's what I was looking for. Right now, the situation because of this has become extremely awkward. I am uncomfortable. I feel awkward because of what has happened. And this is also the reason why I hide from you. I act as if I'm emotionally distant from you. You have seen a side of me that was very impulsive, compulsive, and aggressive. Certain things have happened. Certain things have come about. And I don't understand how I can move forward in this connection. I don't even know if I want to right now. The reason why is because of this doubt, because I betrayed you. And for that reason, you have changed, and I find it difficult to approach you. That's why it's so awkward. Because of what happened to us intimately. I also feel that in this connection, there's this sense of ecstasy. My soul feels you. And I don't know why it feels this way, but there might be a spiritual connection. But I don't want to see that. Because I know I can't be that person that you want me to be. You know what it is that you want in this connection. You know what it is that you want from me. But am I willing to give that to you? That's the question. I don't know if I can. Which is why I keep my distance. All right, Taurus. This person, specifically, I lost words when I was on this card earlier. Some of you may have noticed. I literally lost the words. Here, for the first time, I've actually noticed this twirly. The wind is twirling. But the vibration that I'm getting from this right now, the feeling that I'm getting from this, is that they are so nervous because of what they've done to you, they can't even talk properly anymore. Like they really feel that right now I don't see any guilt. I don't see any remorse. I just see an attitude here where they know they can't approach you. They know that they are feeling very awkward, very uncomfortable. They also know that the easiest thing for them is to keep a distance from you. So I do see here that they are they're not feeling their, their their normal selves, right? They're they're feeling as if, yeah, this is wrong, and I ruined another person's life, their heart. I used them physically. I ruined my relationship, my friendship with them, even though they are a beautiful, wonderful human being, and I even feel a spiritual, slight spiritual connection with them. This is why it's. I'm not getting the overwhelming card, but this is also why we have here the betrayal card. They just don't know why certain things have happened the way that they've happened. It is a difficult situation here. And sometimes for a small, small portion of you, this could be a friends with benefits connection. This could be um, a hookup that happened, but you were expecting it to move forward. This could also be a casual kind of connection. This could also be a connection where two people were together for months and months. I have seen this repeatedly, guys. One person thinks that they are turning this relationship, this relationship into more of a commitment. However, the other person is only using them physically. This is so common, I have seen, and that's what's happening here. Even if you guys are married, even if you're a partner, it does not matter. The inside of a person's heart and mind, they may just consider you more at this point like a friend and they're in the connection for the physical intimacy. The reason why you're here is because there's a lack of that emotion. 
and this person betrayed you. That's why you are here looking at this reading right now. Some of you deny this. Some of my clients, they, they're in denial because they're blinded by love. They don't see this clearly. You need a third person's perspective. And that's what I'm seeing here. This person, yes, they think of you as a really great friend. And yes, they also have this sense of sexuality, wanting to be with you on an intimate level. But the problem is we also have betrayal here. So even if you were in a long-term com committed connection, if you were just getting started, or even if some of you are just having this energetic connection, sometimes you can, like there's people that stare at each other and it's weird. It's like you're making love with the eyes. It's insane. I don't know how... I don't know how people do that, but it's very intense if you experience it. And you literally feel as if you've had an entire relationship with this person just through gestures. That is ridiculous, but it happens all the time. And it becomes so intense, a person starts to obsess over the other person. People start to dress better. They start to smell better. They start to look better. Why? Because there's this unwritten connection, this vibration that the both of you are resonating at. It's a very sexual connection, no doubt. Both of you are very much attracted to each other. But it got to the point where one person in this connection, bottom line, this is what it comes down to, one person in this connection wanted to move forward in a more committed kind of state, and the other person they just, they just had the, the other way. I have a video on my other channel, um, Asnoitia Audio, which is on YouTube. And um, a couple of them, they may resonate with you. So do have a look at the relationship-related um, advice videos. One of them is the one that I'm talking about, friends with benefits, casual connections, and uh, hookup culture. That's one of them. But the other one is also um, dating um, a man in separation or um, a man who is uh, emotionally unavailable. Now, most of them are for men. Um, well, they're for women that are dating men uh, or men that are dating men. But also I have one that is uh, dedicated to my males. Uh, that is why a woman ghosts you. So have a look at that one too, because it does appear that there's a situation here where two people started off great. It was fine in the beginning, but then one kind of went one way and the other just keeps going on that way. And it's um, a disconnect between the both of you. That's why it's not working right now. And obviously it seems to be that's why you're here. All right, let's have a look at what's the deeper meaning behind this. Why did this person behave like this? So here I have, here I have the Lover's Path Tarot. And I want to shuffle this nicely. I don't want to get any repetitive cards that I had in the previous reading. Okay, there you go. Okay, right here. Okay, game right out. Now, these cards I read in the reverse. And also, this particular um, deck, I look into this deck to see what happened in the past. Okay, oh, wow. Wow. Wild and free. Young, wild and free. This person could be mature, but they are very immature when it comes to relationships. Good God. That's why, Taurus, that's why you went through what you went through. Wow. So these cards are what happened in the past. The first set of cards are what happened current. That's your current status, okay? This is for those of you that may have not had closure. This person may have ghosted you. This person may have just simply faded from your life. Certain things have happened in this connection that uh, that really have had an impact. And that's why there's distance now. So in the beginning, things may have been very sweet, very wonderful, but then things became sour. We have here wisdom. Let's have a look. All right, wisdom. Here we have wisdom gained from education. Here it was necessary for this person to gain wisdom and to transform a difficult situation into a better situation. 
However, the problem here, Taurus, that you were dealing with somebody who was unwilling to learn. There was a sense of superficiality. And they were intimidated by intelligence. Feeling limited by a lack of knowledge and understanding. So here we have a situation where you're dealing with somebody that you got into this relationship with, you think you're going great, you think this person is mature, but it actually turns out that they were not. And that really hurts. But you don't know until you try. There's truly no such thing as mistakes. In this lifetime, they are all experiences. The soul experiences things. The soul does not make mistakes. It experiences things. The body, the spirit makes mistakes. But the soul is going through the experiences. Long after our bodies are gone, that's on our resume, the soul's resume. What did we do? What did we learn? And that's what happened here. Your person of interest was just immature. And they were inexperienced. They were not wise when it came to relationships. And that's exactly why they behaved the way that they did. They're just not a wise person. But even if they had wisdom staring them in the face, they really didn't want to learn. There's a sense of unwillingness to learn. This does show me stubbornness and immaturity. Superficiality, they were acting very superficial. Maybe at some time you may have thought, you know, is this person even truthful? You would have, think about it in the past, you would have maybe experienced something like this in the past where you've doubted them, where there have been doubts in this connection and you just pushed it aside. That was your higher intuitive self telling you, be careful. Here we also have the three of cups. The three of cups here talks about a celebration that involves women, maybe even men, possibly a feast, overindulging, procrastination, time to get back to work. Now, what does all this mean? A celebration involving women in particular. This simply means that your person of interest was overindulging in drinks, overindulging in the physical pleasures and materialistic pleasures, could have been with women, could have been with men that have feminine qualities. We have a situation here where this purdy, <laughs> purdy, purdy, this person was a party freak. That's what it's coming down to. They were party freaks. Something's going on here where this person liked the company of other people. They enjoyed the company of other people. They want to have this life where they had this freedom. But the problem here is the word overindulgence. We also had overindulgence when you had the sexuality card too. This here is celebration, pleasure, happiness, good times. Taking anything seriously? No, I don't have to be wise. I can live my dream because I am youthful and vibrant and young and I don't need anybody. I don't have to listen to anybody. This is something that this person had. Their personality is like this. Honestly, you guys found this person to be very fun. Very open. Um, no strings attached type situation. Like they weren't crazy dominating. There's people that are really dominating like narcissists. But this person, maybe they had some of those type of traits. But what I'm seeing here, the vibe is very young, youthful, happy, no strings attached type situation just footloose and collar free. That's kind of like what I'm seeing here. And unfortunately, you can't have a long term committed connection when you're dealing with a person that has that personality. Now, there's some people that have those people in their lives and they're happy, right? But there are some people that go a little above and beyond. And they create these problems for us where we're believing that they're, you know, they're headed where we are. We're on the same path. We have the same plans, the same goals, same ambitions. And then all of a sudden, boom, it's like, who the hell are you? I don't even recognize you. I, who, I, I don't even know who you are anymore. This is what happens. It's because of that sense of superficiality. This is a really, in, like, really intense connection, guys, because I'm getting the vibe. 
that it's a huge betrayal, absolutely huge betrayal. You thought you knew this person and now it's like you never knew them at all. Like who was this person that I was with? They were overindulging and also they were, the key word here is procrastinating. Why does somebody procrastinate? They procrastinate because there's fear of the unknown. That's what happens when you procrastinate because you don't want to face the fear. You don't want to move forward. You don't want to take that leap of faith and that step forward because you don't know what you're getting into. And when you don't know what you're getting into, people just don't do it. You get the illusion card, which you had up here. Person is hiding, taking a step back, emotionally distant. They feel embarrassed. No, I don't want to deal with this anymore. Oh my gosh. Like I said, guys, it's an experience. It's not a mistake, okay? Whatever happened, happened. And you may need to just move forward in this in this life, either with this person or with somebody else. I would recommend somebody else if it's not working out with this person because it does not seem as if they're moving or changing anytime soon. Let's have a look. Any actions, intentions, or plans that this person may have towards you in the coming future? I have here the Beginner's Tarot. All right. If you hear any whispering, guys, that's me. Don't freak out. <laughs> you guys sometimes timestamp it and you're like, I heard a voice. And then you scare me. And then I realized, no, that's me. I hear it in my mind's uh, in my in my head, and sometimes I see it in my mind's eye. So then I whisper it quickly to myself so I don't forget, and then I say it out loud. Oh, <laughs> wow, that's never happened before. Let's see, peekaboo. Holy Hannah, this is freaky. <laughs> Okay, guys, let's see what secrets lie in these cards. First time in my life that has ever happened. That's so weird. <laughs> okay. What secrets lie? Not wanting to truly expose your deepest self. Very nice. Here we have two of wands. Queen of Swords, Three of Pentacles, the Moon, Knight of Cups, Justice, Queen of Wands, and then we have Death. All right. Let's have a look. This person realizes that you were the one. Okay. So going forward, they have seen and they realized in their life that, my goodness, I have completely messed up. And I have made my decision and I want to go back to my Taurus. I want to be with my Taurus. I've made my decision. I want to date them. I want to get to know them more. That's what that is. However, the Queen of Swords, they feel that they have hurt you so much. Remember, you had the selfhood card with the arrow, right? And I believe that's Artemis. I think it was Artemis. I may be mistaken. But the card that had selfhood on it, that's the one that talks a lot about being independent. However, also self-conscious. And this person's very cautious now. They, they really don't uh, want to get into this connection with you because they're afraid of rejection. Here I see with this Queen of Swords, they know that they have hurt you. They know that they've made you go through a lot. They put you through a lot. And it's hurt you to the point where now it's like you're just going to cut them up, chop them into little pieces, metaphorically speaking, guys. They're literally afraid of approaching you. They feel intimidated. They feel scared in a way and nervous. And they don't know how can they approach you or how they should approach you to move forward in this connection. Because they've hurt you so much, they turned you into a cold-hearted person. This is what they think of you as. This is what they perceive you to be. You may not be like this. You might be the most warmest, kindest person. And yet they still feel that the way they treated you, it turned you into this type of person. And of course, that does happen. You did have the selfhood card, and it does mean that you are kind of taking care of yourself more. You don't really need anybody. You have this look of, I am independent. I don't need you anymore in my life. You also have this look that you're very guarded. So with this particular card, it really does resonate with the card before. And it does indicate to me that this person is scared of you now. They're, they're intimidated by you. They don't know how to approach you anymore. 
And that also kind of worries them because they want to be with you. Some of you may, this may be a third party situation. Some of you may have been working with this person either currently or in the past, or you may know them through an association or through somebody else. If that's the case, they are falling in love with you. Also, okay, I'm literally, I'm getting the sentence here. Workplace affair. Okay. Workplace affair. Um, <clears throat> for those of you that have not had that type of a scenario or a situation, this card also indicates that this person really just wants to, to come into your life, even though they know you have other people in your life, other priorities in your life, but they want to work and manifest and construct a partnership with you. They want to work with you to make your life and their life better. They want to be with you in that way. Very interesting. We have the moon card. Why do they want to do this? Why now? Remember you had the betrayal card before? Well, here it is again. They want to do this because they betrayed you. They want to do this because they lied to you. Which means they want to do this because they know the betrayal was wrong. And they know that the lies were absolutely unacceptable. And so now everything that was in the dark, they want to bring into the light. They want to make things right. You have here the justice card. These three cards. Wow. I'm so surprised the way this came out today. First time that's ever happened. So. We have here the Knight of Cups. Somebody from your past who you've had a romantic attachment to will be returning back into your life. That's what this means. Now, why are they returning back into your life? Because they want to make things right. The justice card. They know things have been wrong. They know they've been wrong. They know they betrayed you. They want to come back. Here is an individual who is, again, we don't have a king in this here. We have a knight, right? So yeah, we are a little immature, but we're not a page anymore. Now we're a knight. Hopefully one day there'll be a king. So this person's coming into your life slowly, softly, gently, lovingly, and they are trying to bring you this cup of love. Here we also have the justice card where this person realizes that a lot of things were wrong. There was not an equal give and take. They kept taking and taking and you kept giving. Why was that? It was because they just find you be absolutely, utterly irresistible sexually. Like they just, you're on fire. Metaphorically speaking, this person feels there's so much desire. They feel very comfortable with you. They feel that there's something about you that's more spiritual as well. It's like you get them. Nobody else understands them, but you do. And the overall arching theme here, death. They're done. They are over with what has happened before. They are over with what they have done. They want to restart this connection. The end of the last phase, the beginning of something new. And so here we have the sense of renewed friendship, relationship. This is what this person wants. It's very, very good, Taurus. But because of the way this person behaved, I would suggest to take things slow. Don't rush into any physical intimacy anytime soon, okay? Take some time off. Maybe a little bit, tiny, tiny bit. Okay, holding hands, maybe just a kiss here or there, and that's it, okay? You have to keep your distance so that this person starts to value you more as a human being and not just as an object, because you have the sexuality card before, right? Now you want to show them, all of you, your mind, body, spirit, your soul, every single part of you, not just the body. So take it easy, take your time. If this person really, truly loves you, they will stick around. The candle here that just extinguished, that's not an omen. It's been on for quite some time. I already knew it was supposed to be turning off soon. All right. Just going to do a quick prayer. All right. These messages are brought to you by Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel. All right, ask for help from others. 
Then you have a timeline here within the next few weeks. Followed by if you believe. We have here you are ready. So when we have the you are ready card, it really does show me that you've been through a lot. You're also ready for a new direction. Because this truly has broken your heart. It's like it broke your mind, body, spirit, and your soul. This has really taken a toll on some of you. Your health has taken um, taken some hits in this way, in a bad way. Oh, good lord. Okay, no. Eeks. No. There was a previous reading where I actually, in this spot, I had yes. Today I have no. All right. It does appear that the angels are not happy with this person, and the angels know what's best for you. The angels know what you deserve. And if you have ever experienced somebody that has treated you bad, or you've seen them cheating on you, or you've caught them texting somebody, that is not a coincidence. It's because you were supposed to see it. And those are warning signs that are given to you from the universe. Because the universe who is God, and the angels and the celestial beings know that you deserve more. You deserve better. Those are little like, warning signs, little nudges that, hey, it's probably time you start thinking about something else. But we are so in love that we don't see anything other than that, right? We only see their their body, their face, their cuteness. We don't see the bad. That's what love is, and that's fine. But when it starts to take a toll on your health, guys, for some of you, then it's time to start moving on. This is a message that's not going to resonate. Disclaimer, it's not going to resonate for everybody, okay? But this specific message is for those of you that have been really hurt in this connection. It's a very targeted message. The angels here are saying for you to ask for help from others. So talk to somebody. Talk to a friend, a counselor, a therapist, somebody that you may need to express yourself. Let them know what happened. Let them know how it affected you. Within the next few weeks or months, things are going to start to change. They are saying here, if you believe in your success in the future, it will happen. Here, they're also suggesting that you are ready emotionally, spiritually, and physically to tackle anything that comes your way. However, it's slightly different. You are ready to choose a new direction. That's huge. You are ready to choose a new direction. Wow. The new direction is either a different approach to this specific connection that you're dealing with, or choosing a new direction may actually be another completely different person, a completely different path. And that's okay. You just hop on from one branch to the other, and that's still your reality. It's already written for you. We're just the actors and actresses playing the part. That's the way the celestial beings write our stories when we're here on planet Earth. So don't worry. Even if it's not with this person, it'll be with someone else. Don't worry about that. We also have choose a new direction, recovery. Now, recovery here is truly important because this actually shows me that some of you have been so drained because of the stress, anxiety, depression, heartbreak, pain, hurt. I'm getting the word hurt. You've been so hurt that it has destroyed you on some level. And this is why the angels really are trying to nudge you a little bit from this person, a little, like, keep your distance. That's basically what they're trying to do here. Um, and to take action. To take action. Now, here, taking action can also mean Letting this person know what you're comfortable with and what you're not comfortable with. What are the things that actually bothered you? The betrayal that occurred, right? It is important to get it off your chest. Why not? You're just transferring that energy from one to the other. It's released from you, so it's no longer in you. So it is important, yes, to talk to others, but also to take action and let this person know 
how you felt and what they did wrong. Sometimes even if you send a message knowing that they're not going to respond, that is okay. Send a message, let them know what you felt and leave it at that. If they don't answer you, that's fine. If they do, that's fine. But at least you got it off your chest and you transfer that negative energy from you into the universe. Here we also have the overall arching theme is no. There's something here that you've been thinking about regarding taking any action, regarding choosing that direction. If it's regarding this person, they are actually giving you the advice, no. I know this is hard for some of you because you really want this person. Now these, let me tell you, the way cards and fate and destiny works. This is the current outcome of the path that you are on right now, okay? If you make a decision that's slightly different, then these cards will change. The previous cards will change. This is based on all of the actions, all of the words and decisions that you have spoken and taken. But if you change something slightly, a variation, then the results will also be different. And then these cards will start to change. So those of you who are on this path, if the, if the majority of this reading is resonating with you, and if this is what you want, then this is the result that you're going to get. That the angels are saying you can get somebody better than this person. But if some of you want to go along with this person, then choosing a different technique, taking care of your mind, body, spirit, and soul, letting this person know what's on your mind, and getting advice from other people, that'll also be helpful if some of you want to try to work on this connection. Just remember, you're still dealing with somebody who is a knight, right? This person's not a king yet. They are still very immature and their habits may not be the best. They may have some habits that might be unhealthy. For those of you that feel that you want to be released from negative energies that are around you because of the heartbreak, suffering, and sorrow that you've gone through. Um, I have a package on my website. It's called the Chakra Checkup Package. So remotely, I am able to view negative energies that are in your home, around your aura, and inside of your body, which are your chakra centers. And then I teach you how to get rid of these things from your life, and you have that package for the rest of your life and you can always um, use it, get rid of any negative energy if you feel somebody has sent anything to you. These things get attracted to us because of the way we feel when we are heartbroken as well. And so I do have on my other channel, Asnointia Audio, a video on negative energies. Feel free to have a look at that, all about negative energies. Um, it's an in-depth uh, look and some of the experiences that I've um, gone through myself, plus what my customers have gone through as well. So I do believe that some of you have negative energies around you because of the stress, the anxiety, the depression. If you can't get the chakra checkup package, I recommend two combined are very strong. It's the holy light package and the water wellness package. So if you can't afford this one, you can always get those two. And those two are um, much affordable price. It is also, um, is you can download it after after you give me um, place the order, then I send it to you. But it is a self help guide, and it still works fine. You can get rid of the negative energies from your home, around your aura, inside of your body. There's a whole process that I have, but you need to get rid of this stuff that's going on inside. It's like inside, and it's uh, it only grows. It's important to release it. There's of course other ways of getting rid of negative energies, but I've created my own methods and they work. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you all for your encouragement, for your support. And I look forward to reading the comments. <clears throat> Sorry. Let me know in the comments below if any of this has resonated. It was a very different and pretty unique reading. It's kind of like targeted for, I don't know, a few of you out there. Please let me know um, your stories. I do read them and uh, I do use them as a uh, motivation and inspiration to write other content that I have on my other channel as well on YouTube, which is Astonishia Audio. All right. You all take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys again. Bye now.